hop aboard New Zealand's most popular scenic train, but in a premium class with restaurant quality food served at your seat. And drinks included too. Bon voyage. Find out whether it's worth paying the extra for this higher class of travel. Enjoy the stunning Southern Alps in winter, as well as a spectacular river gorge. With access to an exclusive open air viewing car, the scenery speaks for itself. A broken door threatens to stop our journey in Arthur's Pass, as we edge closer to New Zealand's fabulous west coast. Hello and welcome to Christchurch. Today we're going to be riding on the Transalpine, which you may know I've covered on my channel before, but this journey will be a little different. We'll be traveling in Scenic Plus. This class of travel includes all your food and drink. Uh, it's regionally inspired food. It's gonna be a more premium experience. So why don't you come along and find out what it's like. Christchurch Railway Station is located on the southwestern edge of the CBD. A lot of tour groups make this journey, with a few coach loads of passengers dropped off here. The design of the carriages mean most luggage needs to be checked in. Looks like a busy service today. There's a dedicated queue for Scenic Plus passengers. With Scenic Class, or the Standard Class, you can check in one bag weighing up to 23 kilograms. In Scenic Plus, you can check in two bags. The crew will take your bags to the baggage car, whereas in standard class, passengers need to do this themselves. You need to check in at least 20 minutes before departure. You'll be given a boarding pass with your seat allocation. We're going to be hauled by one DX class loco and one DF class loco. Today's consist has 10 carriages, including four scenic or standard class cars, a cafe car, a luggage car, two open air cars, a kitchen car, and one scenic plus car. Doors open about 30 minutes before departure. There is a lift for passengers who require level boarding. Today we're in carriage P, which I presume is short for plus or premium. Upon boarding, a crew member will escort you to your seat. Thanks. That's the kitchen where our meals and drinks will be prepared. Would you like some still water or sparkling? Oh, sparkling. Welcome aboard the Transalpine in Scenic Plus. I'm going to start with the mimosa. Cheers. And we've also been brought a hot towel. Thank you. You can also choose to have orange juice or sparkling wine as your welcome drink. This carriage has the same 2x2 two two seating as scenic or standard class, but the tables here have been set with white linen. A headset is placed on your seat to listen to the GPS triggered audio commentary. Here's a closer look at the table setting. There are also native flowers, a nice touch. The carriage features large panoramic windows, including these overhead windows. With all passengers on board, the train departs a minute ahead of schedule. Morning and a warm, friendly welcome on board the trains Alpine bound for Rolleston, Darfur, Springfield, Arthur's Pass, Moana and Greymouth. My name is Kellyanne, I'll be your onboard service manager today. Also assisting is your train manager, Ashley. In the cafe car, you have Claudine, Caitlin and Alicia. Down in Senate Plus, you have Tony, Sasha, Gracie and Edna. We're all here to make sure you have a safe and enjoyable journey today. Full capacity today, and we do have uh, passengers at our next four stops. So please remain in those allocated seats. There's a map on the overhead screens to track the train's progress. We make our way west through this Kiwi Rail container depot. And here's the menu for today's journey. The breakfast service begins with a choice between two smoothie flavours and a croissant or a lemon or berry danish. There's a message on the screens and an audible ding before audio commentary commences, which is available in English and Mandarin. So these are the headphones they provide if you want to use them for the onboard commentary. Uh, they don't recycle them, so they said you're welcome to pick them and take them with you if you like. So there are volume controls and you can also change the language. 
we get our first glimpse of the Southern Alps, which we'll be crossing today. We'll start by crossing the Canterbury Plains as we make our way out of Christchurch, before entering the Southern Alps on our way to Arthur's Pass. From here we'll enter a long tunnel that marks the transition from Canterbury to the west coast. We'll then follow a series of river valleys to the town of Greymouth. Our first stop after Christchurch is Rolleston, where we pick up passengers. Rolleston is part of the wider Christchurch metropolitan area. That's the main south line, which continues to Dunedin. We're now heading northwest on the Midland Line. Here's my boysenberry and strawberry smoothie with an apricot danish, which is served warm. This is very much agricultural land. Barista-made coffee is also offered. I choose a latte. The town of Darfield is home to just over 3,000 people. Anticipation builds as the mountains get closer. The Southern Alps span most of the length of New Zealand's South Island, providing a major obstacle to engineers tasked with bridging the divide in the late 1800s. Springfield is the most westerly town on the Canterbury Plains. The railway first reached here in 1880, but it took another 43 years for the line to the west coast to be completed. For many years, Springfield Station had refreshment rooms, which were popular while trains were the usual way to travel west. And with that, we reach the first of five viaducts we'll cross today. It's worth knowing that the best views when heading west will be on the right-hand side, although for the time being, the views are lovely on this side. Although you can't choose your seats, you can contact the Great Journeys of New Zealand to let them know you have a preference. Time for breakfast. I'm having the Rosti with poached eggs, bacon, baby spinach, hollandaise and tomato. We reach Patterson's Creek Viaduct. This was a popular picnic excursion destination in the mid-1890s, before the line was extended over the creek. We traverse more than a dozen short tunnels as the Waimakariri River Gorge comes into view. I'm now in the open air car, allowing unobstructed views on both sides. The Waimakariri is a braided river. The braided channels are formed of sediment and gravel carried from the Southern Alps. We're about to cross the route's most dramatic viaduct. Wedged between tunnels, the staircase viaduct towers 72 metres above the stream below. We'll get a better view of it on the other side. There she is. Before long, we're racing towards the next viaduct, which crosses Broken River.
our locos are hard at work as they climb the grade. I missed the final viaduct, which you can see here. Although we're now well and truly in the Southern Alps, and it is winter, you only get snow at track level with specific climatic conditions. There needs to be cold winds or the snow typically melts. I'm back in the warmth of the carriage. This is one of the best known views on this journey. This small highland lake is popular for trout fishing, although not at this time of year. The fishing season runs from November to April. In the distance is Mount Horrible. Back at my seat, the crew come through with a drink service. The town of Cass is named after pioneer surveyor Thomas Cass. According to media reports, there are five houses in Cass today, but only one resident. For a time, Cass was the end of the Midland Line with a population of 800. This bridge is the entrance to Canterbury's largest high country sheep and cattle station. Mount White Station covers 40,000 hectares. Without a doubt, one of the best parts of travelling in Scenic Plus is you get the exclusive use of an open air rail car. So you're not fighting with the hordes for space uh, as you sometimes can do in the main scenic section. So as you can see, there's plenty of space. Just make sure if you're travelling in winter to bring warm clothes, it's pretty cold. Most of the carriages used on the Transalpine were built between 2010 and 2012 in Dunedin. Looks pretty cold out there. Toilets will be closed down once we depart the Arthur's Pass station, thank you. We're now on approach to Arthur's Pass, where the train will stop briefly and we'll be able to stretch our legs. These two locos will be attached to the rear of our train, another safety measure for traversing the 8.5 kilometre long Otira Tunnel. We're also advised that the onboard toilets and the cafe, which is used by the scenic class passengers, will be closed from Arthur's Pass as standard safety measures for travelling through the Otira Tunnel. 
New Zealand uses narrow gauge. This was adopted because it's cheaper for crossing mountainous terrain. After the locos are attached, we pull forward into the station. The Midland Line reached here in 1914. Quite a few passengers disembark to hike in the surrounding national park or to join a coach tour back to Christchurch via local attractions. There's a five minute stop here in Arthur's Pass. Two additional low coats have been attached to the front and another two to the rear of the train are for safety reasons, ahead of going through the Otira Tunnel. The village of Arthur's Pass is located about five kilometres south of the mountain pass after which it is named. It's quite chilly at this altitude. The extra locos mean the train can exit the Otira Tunnel in either direction in case of a loco failure or emergency. The crew are having trouble closing the accessible door on the cafe car. It won't close securely. The reason this is such an issue is that they need to ensure diesel fumes don't enter the carriages when we head into the tunnel. They seal the door with duct tape and seek permission from train control to enter the Otira Tunnel. Feels like it hasn't been my weekend this weekend, so um, let's hope that we don't run into any more trouble today. The toilets are now not available and will be closed for around 15 minutes. All of this takes quite a while, leading to a delay of almost an hour. There's a sense of relief among passengers when told the train can proceed as it did seem there was a risk we'd be unable to continue. The line in the tunnel has an average grade of 1 in 33. This means for every 33 metres we travel, we descend a metre. This is equivalent to a 3% grade, steep in railway terms. We'll descend 244 metres while in the 8.5k tunnel. Construction took 15 years and was interrupted by World War I. Opening in 1923, it was the longest tunnel in the British Empire at the time of construction. Because of the steep grade and the difficulty in dealing effectively with the smoke from steam locos, the line through the tunnel was originally electrified. But because of the increasing age of the electrification system and the availability of upgraded diesel locomotives combined with the use of extraction fans, the electrification was decommissioned in 1997 and the equipment removed. The Otira Tunnel marks the transition from Canterbury to the West Coast. Sometimes called the Great Divide or Main Divide, the mountains under which the Otira Tunnel travels stand in the way of the weather. As a result, the weather is typically wetter on the west side, sometimes called a rain shadow. The rivers here flow west, towards the Tasman Sea. This is a technical stop so that the extra locos on the front and rear of our train can be removed. Now unfortunately we, are, we have lost a lot of time, so our estimated arrival time is 2 o'clock into Greymouth platform. Here's one of the detached locos. Welcome to Otira which for most of its life was a railway town, running the railway that kept the coal flowing from the west coast coal fields to Christchurch and the rest of New Zealand. We've almost halved our elevation in the 14 kilometres since Arthur's Pass. And over there is an eastbound train loaded with coal. Otira Railway Station dates from 1900. Lunch orders are taken shortly after departing. Let's head back to the open air car while lunch is prepared.
we cross the Taramako. Apologies if I've got the pronunciation wrong. Lake Poirua sits on the Australia Pacific Plate boundary, with granite rock from the Australian Plate to the west and metasedimentary rocks from the Pacific Plate to the east. It's popular for trout fishing. You might be wondering about the differences between Scenic or Standard Class and Scenic Plus. While all passengers have access to an open air viewing car, in Scenic Plus you have one car for one carriage of passengers, whereas the Standard Class open car is shared by passengers from up to five carriages. There's a cafe car in Standard Class which offers microwave type hot meals for a price. In Scenic Plus, there's a dedicated kitchen car where our regionally inspired meals are prepared a la carte, and the drinks and food are included in the fare. Scenic Plus also includes table service as well as a dedicated check-in lane plus priority luggage at your destination. I'll cover the price difference later in the video. Scenic Plus is also available on the coastal Pacific between Christchurch and Picton and will also be available on the Northern Explorer between Auckland and Wellington beginning in May 2024. Lunch is served. I've chosen the roast chicken salad which is served with smoked salmon and champagne ham finger sandwiches. We reach another scenic highlight, Lake Brunner. Lake Brunner is the largest lake in the west coast region of New Zealand. Lake Brunner was created in the last ice age by a spur of the Taramako Glacier, which split from the main glacier and flowed north either side of Mount Takinga. The small town of Moana sits on Lake Brunner's northern shore and is a popular holiday destination in the summer. I can certainly see the appeal. We'll get a better look at the station on our return journey tomorrow. In case you're wondering, there's no access for passengers from our open air car to the standard class section ahead. For dessert, I've chosen the Whitakers Chocolate Mousse with Cookie Time Triple Choc Crumble. Whitakers is a well-known Kiwi chocolate maker. There's a rail junction here with the Westport Line, which is primarily used to haul coal. We'll stay on the Midland Line heading for the West Coast. we follow the Grey River downstream towards the Tasman. If you keep a lookout, there's a small waterfall here. This is the site of New Zealand's deadliest mining disaster the explosion of a suspected pocket of methane gas deep in Brunner Mine in 1896 killed all 65 miners below ground. Not long after this, we reach our destination, Greymouth. A 
final look inside our carriage. Thanks, bye. Checked luggage can be collected at the rear of the train. I think it's worth paying, especially... <laughs> the Transalpine departs for sidings just south of here, where the train will be readied for this afternoon's return service to Christchurch. But I'm staying here overnight and catching the train tomorrow. That was the Transalpine in Scenic Plus. Do I recommend paying the extra if you can afford it and you're up for a premium experience with the food as well as the additional space you get, uh, especially in the open air car, then yes, I think it's worth paying for. New Zealand's west coast has plenty to offer, including the Pancake Rocks and Blow Holes Walk, about 40 minutes north of Greymouth by car. Hopefully it's obvious why they're called Pancake Rocks. And these waterfalls are a short walk from a town just north of Greymouth. This view of snow-covered peaks south of Greymouth is hard to beat. There's also an old signal box in Greymouth. It's the next day and I'm taking the Transalpine back to Christchurch. I won't show you the whole trip again in detail, but I will show a few highlights, including the food, as the return service includes dinner. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Great. I'll also run through the prices. This time, I'm in an airline-style seat instead of at a table. The seats are reversible, so they always face the direction of travel. What orange juice, darling? Uh, summer love, please. Summer Love is the name of this wine, a sparkling Riesling. It's slightly sweet. The seat has a fold down table that can be moved forward and back. Kiwi Rail is building a custom carriage for Scenic Plus with all seats around tables, which is likely to be in service by the time you watch this video. We depart a few minutes behind schedule. The crew come around regularly with steel and sparkling water. And of course, there's a hot towel service. After departure, there's a light afternoon meal, including smoked salmon, olives, pickled vegetables, feta, and pesto with bread. The summer love was a little sweet for my taste, so I've gone for an oyster bay cuvee. Bon appetit. That was delicious. I really love this pesto. The crew come through regularly to top up alcoholic drinks too. We're on schedule. The timber station building here dates from 1926 and is considered a fine and now relatively rare example of a Type A station by renowned architect and engineer George Alexander Troop. While you enjoy the scenery, let's look at the fares for this journey. One way adult fares in standard class or scenic class start at 199 New Zealand dollars in winter. Fares are slightly higher in summer as that is peak season. For comparison, Scenic Plus, which I'm travelling in, starts at 439 New Zealand dollars, so more than double the price. Yes, it's expensive, but I really enjoy the experience, not just the food, but the dedicated open air car. If you keep an eye out, you can also find special offers from time to time, particularly on the eastbound leg, which tends to be less popular than the westbound journey. I found a 15% off discount code for today's journey on the Great Journeys of New Zealand website. The price doesn't seem to put many people off, with Scenic Plus regularly sold out in summer. The Transalpine runs daily until May and then Fridays through Mondays until mid-September when the daily service resumes. Travelling with the afternoon sun does make this eastbound journey feel different. Time to look at dinner options. 
there are three choices. Roast chicken rubbed with a native pepper tree, slow braised lamb, or potato gnocchi. While we're at it, here's the drinks list. So when we arrive into the station building, we will be closing the toilets for the Oterra Tunnel. So now is a good time to use the toilet. The Southern Alps come into view. On the eastbound journey, Scenic Plus is near the front of the train, so we can really hear our DX class locos at work. The temperature is starting to drop, so I've got the open air car to myself. This footbridge across the Oteira River is the start of a hiking track. Hiking is called tramping in New Zealand. A few minutes later we're in Oteira, where extra locos will be added to the front and rear of our train before we enter the Oteira Tunnel. Eight minutes later, we're on the move again. Behind this building is the tunnel portal. There's a large door at the tunnel entrance that will be closed after we've entered and an extraction fan used to remove the diesel fumes. It takes about 13 minutes to traverse the tunnel. The tunnel is now 101 years old. And you'll stick to it then. Please do take care alighting from the service. It will reopen once we depart the station. We will now reopen those uh, toilets along with the outdoor viewing car. Welcome to Arthur's Pass. A sneak peek at the kitchen. We're back in Arthur's Pass, which is the highest railway station on the South Island of New Zealand. The two helper locomotives that were on the front of the train have been uncoupled and we now have a proceed signal. On departure, the crew start a pre-dinner drink service. I've chosen the Pinot Noir. I'm using a Bluetooth headphone transmitter so I can use my own wireless headphones to listen to the audio commentary. The Waimakariri is one of the largest rivers in Canterbury, flowing 151 kilometres or 94 miles from the Southern Alps to the Pacific Ocean. Lake Sarah looks so different to when we saw it in the morning surrounded by frost. We can see Mount Binsa in the distance. It's not that cold. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's brisk, but not Dinner time. This is slow braised Canterbury lamb shoulder with potatoes, broccoli and salsa verde. Butter, which is warm, and sourdough. And of course lamb and Pinot Noir, perfect combination. On the one hand, it's great to have these views while enjoying a meal. On the other, you miss out on experiencing these viaducts from the open air car. But I guess you can't have everything.
after finishing dinner, I make it to the open air car for one of the final viaducts. The crew top up our drinks as the sun begins to set. For dessert, I've chosen the rhubarb and berry compote with vegan coconut cream, patisserie and oat crumb. The other options were white chocolate cheesecake or a cheese platter. One disadvantage of travelling in winter is the final part of our journey is in the dark. We arrive about 15 minutes ahead of schedule. And that was Scenic Plus on the Transalpine. It was a fantastic journey. It's hard to beat a really enjoyable meal with some nice drinks on board a train. In my next video, we travel on Japan's newest train, Spatia X. This train is something of a celebrity with high demand for tickets. Welcome aboard the Spatia X. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, give it a like and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Hope to see you then!